Happy Easter, world. I just spontaneously got inspired to give a short Easter message to the world because Easter is very important. And first, I just want to say a short prayer. Heavenly Father, because I haven't really planned what I'm going to say, I pray that the Holy Spirit can be here with me um, to guide me in my Easter message. Amen. So Easter is very, very important. And we had a wonderful Easter service today um, over at the Word of Life Assembly of Ch God Church. And uh, one of the things that was most inspiring to me is at the end of the service, the children who had been in a different part of the church came in and had to be reunited with their parents because they were going to be giving out presents um, or prizes um, for the children. And so the children came in and their parents were standing up. And so the children were looking for their parents and their parents were looking for the children. And it was a really beautiful thing um, to see this parent-child reunion. And what it made me think of is how God is our loving parent who is seeking for us and seeking to be reconciled to us. And so watching the little children find their parents made me think of when, you know, just as Jesus described in Luke 15 when he talked about looking for the lost sheep and how the angels rejoice for every, every time that a child reconciles himself to God, then the angels in heaven rejoice. And it was the same way because it wasn't only the parents and the children who were happy when they found a child, but it was the whole congregation, the people sitting around when they would see a little child come out. Oh, mommy, daddy, you know, and the parents, oh, you know, welcoming them back and picking them up and giving them a hug, you know. So, you know, you could see the father's heart in that, you know, in that part of the service. Um, so resurrection. Um, is extremely important. Um, you know, the Gospel of John says that um, God sent the light into the light, came into the world, so that whoever believed in him gained the power to become sons and daughters of God. Not born of the flesh or of the will of man, but born of God. So, Jesus came to the world so that we could be reconciled to our Father who is in heaven. And Jesus had been carrying on his ministry in Galilee and in Judea and in Samaria. And the culmination of his ministry was that he was rejected by the people, rejected by the Jewish leaders, and crucified by the Romans under the authority of Pontius Pilate. And so everybody thought that he was dead. And even at the cross, none of his disciples, according to the records in the synoptics, were there. The only ones that were were a handful of women. And they thought he was dead. And they put him in a tomb. And then Mary Magdalene, after the Sabbath, went to the tomb and the door was open and Jesus wasn't there. And then as she was walking out, then Jesus met with her. And so Mary Magdalene then was the first one to realize that Jesus wasn't dead. She went to go tell the disciples and they didn't believe him. They didn't find out until some time afterwards. Everybody thought that Jesus was dead. So the resurrection is a major thing because then subsequently Jesus appeared to two on the road to Emmaus. Jesus met with his 11 disciples and they were all able to see that the man whom they believed was the Son of God and the Messiah, and then thought that he had been killed. And so they were in a state of shock and disillusion. Suddenly, they found out that Jesus, who they thought was dead, who had been killed, crucified by the Romans, was 
resurrected. And that's what we celebrate today. That's what we're celebrating on, on Easter. Um, because that was the rebirth of hope. The Christian movement started from that time. Started from Jesus appearing to Mary Magdalene and Mary Magdalene telling the 12 disciples, the, the 11 remaining apostles, and then the 11 remaining apostles, Jesus meeting with them for 40 days and instructing them and then telling them to stay. And then the Pentecost um, where the Holy Spirit came and then the Christian movement began to grow. And then Jesus appeared to Paul and then Paul began his ministry, reaching beyond Judea, Galilee, and Samaria, out into the Roman world. Um, other apostles also took the message as Jesus instructed them out to the world. And the message was, is that if you believe in the words that Jesus spoke, then you could pass from death to life and be reborn as sons and daughters of God. So that is a really hopeful thing. You know, Paul and others reiterated, you know, that our hope is in, our hope was born in the resurrected Jesus. That the ministry carries on to this day. And so happy Easter, everybody. And now, We'll just have to stop and reflect for a minute and say 2,000 years have gone by almost 2,000 a little bit less than 2,000 almost 2,000 years have gone by and so where do we stand now and what is what is the message that Jesus Christ brought what are some of the things that he said what are some of the teachings that he had what are the words of Jesus that he gave to us to bring us life? Because um, Jesus said, when the Gospel of, of John records it, Jesus didn't say or do anything but what he saw the Father doing or but what the Father told him to do. And the Synoptic Gospels, Mark, Matthew, and Luke, they say that Jesus was filled with the Holy Spirit and the words that Jesus was speaking were words of life. So, what are these words of life that Jesus said? And how are we applying them? You know, I mean, there are many, I don't know them all, you know, I probably have read them all, but I don't recall them all. But I know some of them that are revolutionary, have been revolutionary for me, are things like, love your enemies. Love your enemies. Jesus said, you know, that those who believe in me are those who are going to follow my commandments. That's one of Jesus' commandments. Love your enemies. How about this one? Do not be anxious about the morrow. Sufficient unto the day are the troubles thereof. You know, are we practicing these things? You know, Jesus said to take the message to all the nations of the world. And we're pretty far along on that. In that thing, it's taken some time. Um, but, you know, the message has been put out to all the world. Jesus said, I am the light of the world. Those who follow me will not walk in, walk in darkness, but will live in the light of eternal life. So, I mean, that's what we want, right? Peace on earth, goodwill towards men. Let's be people who, we listen to these words and we put them into practice. So that's why I encourage people, read the Bible, find those places in the Bible where it is God's words, the words of life. In the New Testament, find those places where Jesus is speaking and giving us instruction on how we should live. Because that's the gospel. The gospel is that the words of God that Jesus spoke, 
and also in other cases where there was divine inspiration in some of the Psalms, like Psalm 23, the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not lack. He leadeth me beside still waters, he makes me to lie down in green pastures. He restoreth my soul. He prepares a table in the presence of my enemies. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I shall fear no evil, for thou art with me. Because that is the message of the Bible. God is the loving Father who wants to be reconciled to his children. In 2 Corinthians 5.19, it says, God reconciled the world unto himself without counting our sins and thus gave to us a, us a mission of reconciliation. So, those of us who have received the words of God through Jesus, through the saints, through the prophets, we have a responsibility. We have, through those words, we can be reconciled to God. We can be born again, not of the flesh, not of the will of man, but we can be born again through believing and practicing these words. We can be born again. We can be baptized not just with water, but with spirit, so that we can live in the Holy Spirit. And But in so doing, then we also inherit a mission of reconciliation. Reconciliation to God and reconciliation to each other. You know, we pray, forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And Jesus said, therefore forgive others their trespasses, because unless you forgive others their sins, your sins will not be forgiven. So we're looking for reconciliation with God and reconciliation with one another. Peace on earth, goodwill towards men. So here it is, Easter Day. You know, we, on Christmas we celebrate the birth of Jesus on Easter Day, we celebrate the birth of Christianity after the resurrection and the mission of Christianity to go out and reconcile the world unto God. God is a loving Father who is seeking reconciliation with his children. We can help facilitate reconciliation between God and man and between man and man by sharing the words of truth. And if you do this, and you have the Holy Spirit within you, then the Holy Spirit will guide you. Jesus said, I will send you the Holy Spirit. In one case he called it the Spirit of Truth, in another case he called it the Comforter. But however you perceive it, when you have the Holy Spirit within you, then the Holy Spirit, just as you know, Jesus said in his prayer in John 17 that in that day you will know that I am in the Father and the Father is in me and I in you and we are all one. And so he gave us a commandment. The, one of the last commandments he gave to his disciples. He said, therefore, I get, after he washed the disciples' feet in, in John chapter 13, and he said, so this day I give to you a new commandment that you love one another. So, God loves us. We need to love one another. Happy Easter. <laughs>